this tutorial, we'll cover how to make a retro anime aesthetic for your images. If you've been on Twitter in the last decade or so, you'll probably have seen at least one of these artists work. They're really fantastic artists, you should give them a follow. But they do a really good job of emulating this style that we're going for. I myself have looked into the style particularly for Freedom's intro, so I'll be going over the steps that I use to emulate the look for Freedom's intro. So for those of you who don't know, analog animation was created using what's called the multiplane camera. Because it's a film camera, film grain is going to be present in the photo. The blacks and whites are not going to be pure because a light was applied before the photo was taken, which results in a lower contrast image and the colors appearing not as rich as they are on cell. If these problems were present today, we would just fix them in post. If you're looking for a more in-depth explanation of the multiplane camera, check out this video here by the Mouse House. Most anime, even from that era, are 540p or 720p at best because that was HD at the time. That's a far cry from 4K, let alone the 1080p images we're used to seeing now. This adds a kind of fuzziness and blurriness and a charm that gives us a sense of nostalgia. Image compression was also a result of formatting at the time. We've gotten a lot better at compressing images with virtually no quality loss, but at the time a lot of quality was lost for it to fit on DVDs or VHS. This leads to some weird color fringing, some sharpening and strange artifacts around the images. I'm going to be using Clip Studio Paint for the majority of this tutorial. This process works in almost any photo editing program. There are two things to consider before applying this filter. One is style, and the second is rendering choice. I highly recommend choosing a style that is based off one of the animes of the 90s. Pokemon, Evangelion, Bebop, Sailor Moon. Pick a style that looks reminiscent of the aesthetic you're already trying to achieve. Secondly, try to think as if you're creating a cell for an animation. Use thin brushes to mimic inking, and then flatten the characters and cell shade them. This effect isn't too difficult to achieve. Let's get right into it. So first, I'm gonna apply a brightness contrast filter. I'm gonna go with 15 for brightness and negative 15 for contrast. This brings the blacks up a little bit and lightens them. And then it also reduces the saturation and overall starkness of the image. Because again, we're trying to apply an analog camera's perspective onto our photo. I'm gonna make two duplicates. On one of them, I'm gonna apply a 15 pixel Gaussian and then set the layer blend mode to color. And this will create some really nice, very, very subtle color fringing already. On the second duplicate, I'm gonna apply an eight pixel Gaussian blur set to 30%. Next step is I'm gonna reduce the image resolution. So I'm gonna set my image resolution to 40% of what it's currently at. Zooming in, you can see there's already quite a bit of quality loss. The lines aren't as sharp, they're already kind of blurring. I'm going to merge all my layers into a new layer and you can do this by just right clicking on the topmost layer and merge visible. And then I'm gonna apply an unsharp mask to that new layer with a radius of five and a strength of 70, a threshold of zero. Next, I'm gonna apply what's called a gradient map. I'll get more into these in future tutorials, but essentially what I'm doing is remapping all the values on the picture according to this gradient. So as you can see on the left, it's set to black and on the right set to white, making the image black and white. If you were to revert these, it would inverse those colors and invert the values. So by applying colors to the values, we can change how the image looks completely. If you color sample blacks and whites from a screenshot of a cell, you'll notice that it's never pure black and pure white. It's always off a little bit. And again, that comes from the analog production methods. So I would just want to emulate that by making sure that the blacks aren't completely black. And we've already done that when we lightened them. But now I'm going to add a slight color to them. I'm going to be going with a darkish green and a peachy tan yellow. The reason I chose this is because this is what Bebop cells look like. In Evangelion, the blacks are more orange and the whites are more blue. And then I'm just going to set that to 15%. Next, we're going to add some grain. We can do this using the Perlin Noise Filter. I will caveat this portion of the tutorial by saying, Clip Studio Paint does not support chromatic grain. It only supports monochromatic grain, which means you can only generate black and white grain as opposed to most other photo editing programs, which will add grain that is multicolored. I think multicolored grain is a more authentic look, so if you have access to that, I suggest using that instead. I'm gonna be sticking with this grain just so we can all stay within the same program. I'm going to set my scale to 1, my amplitude to 0.4, and my attenuation to 0.3. Next, I'm going to apply a slight blur to the grain. Again, unfortunately, Clip Studio Paint only supports a 2 pixel blur minimum. I don't know why this is a limitation, it's very bizarre, but if you have access to a photo editing program that allows you to go smaller, 
use that instead. I'm gonna set my layer blending mode to overlay and then reduce the opacity to 75%. Again, I'm gonna merge visible to a new layer, combining all the previous layers into a new one. I'm gonna duplicate that three times for a total of four new layers. We're gonna use this to create a chromatic aberration effect. This is not straightforward in Clip Studio Paint. Do your best to follow along. The goal with this process is to separate red, green, and blue into their own separate channels using level correction. If I wanna isolate red, I have to disable green and blue. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the green, disable the output by just dragging from the right all the way to the left and do the same with blue. Now you'll see we only have red. I'm gonna merge down and rename this R. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for green and blue. I'm gonna go back up, select level correction, and now to isolate green or blue, I need to disable the other two. So. I'm gonna disable red and disable blue, so now we're left with green. Disable red, disable green, and we're left with blue. You need to make the fourth duplicate that you made pure black, and you'll see why in a second. To get our image back, set the layer blending mode to screen. But now what we can do, selecting the move tool and using your arrow keys, you can now displace parts of the image and you'll get this very interesting color fringing effect. After messing around with this for a bit and getting the effect that you want, group them all together in a folder. I'm gonna duplicate the folder just as a backup, merge the folder down so now all of this chromatic aberration effect is merged into one, and apply a slight blur to it. My exact value was 2.41, but yours could be anything that looks good to you. I'm gonna set the layer blend mode of this chromatic aberration effect to color and then drag it around to where it looks about right. Now I'm gonna export as a JPEG and bring back the image resolution back to its original form. At this point you could be done, but I, I like to take it just a step further. I'm gonna apply an unsharp mask to get back some clarity. And then I'm gonna take back that clarity right away and apply a three pixel Gaussian blur. One more optional step you can do if you really want some artifacting Export your JPEG at about 80% quality. And voila! Now you have an image that looks like it could be some relic of a forgotten anime. If you guys learned anything from this tutorial, consider supporting me on Patreon. You'll get access to videos a week before they release. You'll have a say in what content I produce, and you'll be able to support a small creator. I want to continue to make high quality art tutorials centered around workflows and tips and tricks that I've learned. Also, there's a public discord now for this YouTube channel. Are you artsy enough to join the Lizard Legion? Thanks guys, I look forward to making another video and I'll see you in the next one.